Okay, so we're going to continue on with vectors, and I am making the executive decision to skip a few things right now. In particular, I'm going to skip some forces and some work and some torque on the premise that I think those of you who desperately need that probably have already covered that with Mr. Bagshaw. Um, and secondarily, it's, uh, you know, it's one of the things that you can pick up more readily than the other stuff that I am going to teach. Um, if at the end we find that we have some spare time, I, I find that very unlikely. But if that is the case, then we'll, we'll circle back and, and revisit this. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to move on and we're going to talk about um, vector multiplication. Right? So I'm going to just start with, come here, vector multiplication. Oh, I'm using, yeah, okay. Vector multiplication. So vector multiplication, what's interesting, and I've, I've hinted at this before, is in fact, there are two types of vector multiplication. Okay. So historically, um, if I said, what's eight times five, we could have written it as eight times five, but certainly there have been occasions where I've written it as eight times five with just a little dot. And, you know, those were entirely interchangeable back in the era of only dealing with um, numbers or integers or, you know, even real numbers. All of a sudden, uh, the times symbol, as we have thought about it, and the, you know, the dot symbol, we thought those were interchangeable. In fact, these are going to mean two different things. Um, okay, and so I'm going to separate this uh, and we're going to kind of talk about the two different types. So there are two different types of multiplying vectors. The first is going to be something called dot product, and you can guess which symbol is going to go in there. And then the other one is going to be called cross product. Okay, so um, if we were doing dot product, it would be vector A, and we would make a dot symbol, vector B, okay, and that is called a dot product. And then cross product, if I want to do the cross product of two vectors, it would be A, and then we say cross B, but it's, it's the traditional times symbol that we are used to. And these are both types of vector multiplication, but there is huge differences between them and they don't do the same thing at all. Um, so the first thing to note of this one is the result of a dot product. Okay, so the, the, the product of dot product um, is a scalar. So it ends up being a number, right? So this is just going to end up being some number. So it is a scalar. Um, what does that scalar represent? You know, every year kids ask that question. Um, and I say kind of hold off on worrying about what that number represents for now. And we'll sort of revisit it later on. For now, it's just going to become... Um, an intellectual exercise, I suppose, is the easiest way to say it. Okay. Uh, and, you know, maybe you have an idea now that the result of a cross product is not a scalar, it is a vector. Okay, so this would result in some vector result, right? And singularly, those are the that's the biggest difference between the two. Um, so sometimes dot product, and and I'm only saying this because i you know I know in theory people say this. This can be considered a scalar product of two vectors, and you know for very self-explanatory reasons. Um, I don't know anyone who would refer to it as a scalar product versus a vector product because you know I mean I guess it is self-explanatory but it, it's not as it's not as clear as actually just using the appropriate name but sometimes they are called that in fact so 
we are going to start with some geometric dot producting. Okay, so we're going to look now at dot product of geometric vectors. So um, I'm just going to go with a definition to begin with here. Um, and it's kind of hard to, to derive it. It's, it's going to be used in derivations of other things. But, you know, suffice it to say for right now, I'm just going to give you a definition. So here's the definition. Uh, the definition of the product of two vectors. So uh, given vector u and vector v are non-zero vectors, then uh, u dotted with v is defined as being the magnitude of u times the magnitude of v times the cosine of theta, where theta is the angle between the vectors when they are placed tail to tail. So I'm going to draw a couple of vectors here. I probably should be doing this in smart notebook, but we're going to work here anyway. Uh, and so if this is vector u and this is vector v, um, and then this, obviously, in here is going to be the theta. So when they're placed tail to tail. So the dot product, and so this is, I don't have a highlighter, but, um, you know, this is important. This is the definition of the dot product of any vectors, but certainly geometric vectors is, it's, it's, it's you know, where we're at for geometric vectors here for sure. Um, right. So let's kind of... Think about this for a moment. So if we look at this, we know the result of a dot product is a scalar, which is nice because all three of these things result in a scalar, right? So a scalar times a scalar times a scalar is, well, it's a scalar. Now, when we do the dot product of two geometric vectors, there are three possible results. I mean, there's an infinite number of results, but there are three categories or three classes that this falls into three classes of result. Okay, so let's separate these into some categories here. So we've got some shift action going on here. There we go. And there we go. Okay, so um, the first thing that can happen is the result is positive. Right, and so the result is going to be positive under what circumstances? Well, let's think about this. So we've got the u dotted with v is equal to the magnitude of u times the magnitude of v times the cosine of theta. Well, by definition, this one is always positive. By definition, this one is always positive because, of course, those are magnitudes, right? You can't have a negative magnitude. That doesn't make sense. So the only thing that dictates whether the result is going to be positive or not is the cosine of theta. And so let's think about um, the cosine of theta. Uh, so if we consider cosine, right, so here's a cosine, and, you know, there is, I'm going to revert back to degrees because I think most of us think about degrees better than um, radians. But there we go. This is 90 degrees. Right. So in theory, and this would be 270, I guess, in theory, that could mean that the angle between them is between 0 and 90 or between 270 and 360. Well, if the angle is between 270 and 360, it's always the interior angle between them. And we're not going to take the, the reflex angle. We're going to take the acute angle. So basically what this indicates is, is that uh, if the result is positive, we can infer from that that theta must be less than 90 degrees, right? Um, because if it was over here, we had just measured the interior angle and it's still just going to be less than 90 degrees, okay? Uh, and so then over here, I'm going to jump over to the third case, uh, and that is going to be that the result is um, negative. 
And again, I'm going to write it out. So it's going to be u dotted with v is equal to the magnitude of u times the magnitude of v times the cosine of theta. And again, that's always positive. That's always positive. So this is going to end up being the negative result. Um, put a little pause over here just to kind of contrast it. Uh, and, and where is it negative? Well, we can see um, from that same graph over there um, that the negative result, this is 180 degrees, and this is still 90 degrees. So the result is, is that it's got to be in this area here. Because again, if it was between 180 and 270, we'd still just measure the interior angle, and it would end up being between 90 and 70. So if the result is negative, we can conclude that uh, 180 degrees is less than theta is less than, sorry, that's supposed to be 90. Let me correct that. Um, uh, back where we were. Sorry about that. So 90 degrees is less than theta is less than 180 degrees. Okay. So that's what we can conclude if it's not, if it's negative. And then of course, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming you can probably figure out what's going on here. The result is zero. Uh, well, again, u dotted with v is equal to the magnitude of u times the magnitude of v times the cosine of theta. Positive, positive. The only way that they can, this can happen is if it's zero on the cosine of theta. So, you know, looking at our, our graph of cosine again, you know, there's 180 and there's 90. Well, that means that they are 90 degrees to one another. So that means that theta is explicitly 90 degrees. So that would mean that if we think about it in terms of, you know, a geometric vector, um, they are at right angles to one another. So this would be like there's U, there's V, and they must be at right angles to one another. Okay, so that's 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 good. So that's a definition. And in fact, this one's you know it, it's I'm going to put a little you know asterisk on this guy here. Um, this is important because we're going to use this to test if vectors are perpendicular to each other, right? And that should make sense, right? Like if, if I just give you two random vectors and I say, hey, you know, are these perpendicular? I mean, we're going to have different methods of doing that. One of them would be to find out what the angle between the vectors are. But alternatively, if we didn't really care what the angle was, we just wanted to know whether it was at right angles, we could do the dot product. And if the dot product returned a zero, that would mean that, oh, theta is 90 degrees. Yeah, they're at right angles. Okay, and that's, so that's a big deal. Um, nevertheless, on we go. So um, let's look at an example. So imagine we had the two following two vectors. We had vector A and vector B, um, where the magnitude of A is equal to 2, and the magnitude of B is equal to 5. Okay, And so I'm going to draw these guys. So there's A, there's B, so there's A, and there's B. And I'm going to tell you that the angle between them is 45 degrees. I want to know, um, you know, so determine what A dotted with B is. So, you know, good idea. Go ahead, try that on your own uh, using the definition that we have. Come on back and see what you got, right? Okay, well, we know that this is going to be the magnitude of A times the magnitude of B times the cosine of theta. Okay, so we can come back here and we can say, all right, well, the magnitude of A is given to us as 2. The magnitude of B is given to us as 5. And then the cosine of 45 degrees. I mean, I could type that into my calculator if I forgot about special triangles. But, of course, I did not forget about special triangles. So that's 1, 1, root 2. I was going to say that's pi by 4, but it's also 45 degrees. So the cosine of theta is opposite or adjacent over hypotenuse. So 1 over root 2. So this is 1 over root 2. So this is going to be... 10 over root 2, but we're better than that. So I'm going to multiply by root 2 over root 2. And so that's going to be, we'll do it in multiple steps. So 10 root 2 over 2, which is equal to 5 root 2. Okay. And if you are calculator bound, it's about 7.07 ish. Okay. So there's the dot product. And you think, you know, what does that even represent? Well, it's positive, which isn't surprising because it's theta was less than 90 degrees. 
I'm not going to worry about units. I'm not going to worry about the specific meaning. Right now, I'm just going to worry about the mechanics. And that is the mechanics for that first one. Okay. So there is some geometric dot producting. So now what we're going to do is we're going to talk about the properties of dot products. So the properties of dot products. Okay, um, so good. So there's some things that are worth knowing. Uh, so the first is, is that dot products are commutative. So dot product is commutative. And I'm sure most of you don't recall what that is. What that means is as follows, that A dotted with B is equal to B dotted with A. So the order doesn't matter for dot product. Notice for dot product, please do not think that this necessarily extends to cross product because it doesn't. Okay, so dot product is commutative. Uh, dot product is distributive. And hopefully you remember what that one means. So if I had A and I wanted to dot that with vector B plus vector C, that does not look like a bracket, uh, C, it is distributive. And so that would be the same thing as A dotted with B plus A dotted with, uh, that's not a C, with C. Okay, so that is dot product is distributive. Now, I want you to think about another case. So think, I know you struggle with that, Jad, a little bit, but that's okay. Uh, so think, uh, imagine that I had A dotted with B, which was dotted with C. Hmm, is that the same thing as A dotted with B dotted with C. Consider that one. Is that true? And hopefully you're like, haha, can't fool me, Galbraith. No, it's not true. But it's not not true because of that property. It's not true because if we think about this result, the result of that, what is the result of a dot product? Well, it is a scalar, right? It is a scalar. And so then you can't dot A with a scalar. So A can't dot with a scalar. So this does not work, right? Nor does this, obviously, because it's the same boat, right? So that that's, you know, that's worth being aware of. You can't dot three vectors in a row. It doesn't work. Okay, so let's think about some special cases now. Uh, so some special cases. Um, if we took and we've dotted a vector with itself. So imagine I dotted A with itself, A dotted with A. Well, that's going to be the magnitude of A times the magnitude of A times the cosine of theta. Well, the theta between two vectors in themselves, like there's one vector and there's the other vector that's right on top of it. So the theta is zero. So that's the magnitude of A times the magnitude of A times the cosine of zero. Well, the cosine of zero is just one, right? So that ends up just being one. So it's the magnitude of A squared um, times one. So it's just the magnitude of A squared. So that's a big deal, right? That is a very big deal. Okay. Um, so, you know, if we extend that, and so imagine I did vector i hat dotted with vector i hat. Now recall, of course, i hat is a very specific one. That is um, the vector that is one zero or one zero zero, depending on whether you're doing it in two space or three space. And I know it's one because, well, it's a unit vector. And I know it's one zero zero just because of by definition i hat is 
the vector along the unit vector along the x-axis. Right? So this would be the magnitude of i times the magnitude of i, I hat, I guess, and the magnitude of i hat uh, times the cosine of theta. Well, theta is going to be zero again. Well, the magnitude of of i by very definition is one. Uh, so I have to be careful. I was going to put a little dot there for times, but we'll try not to be ambiguous. Uh, and that's one. And then the cosine of zero degrees, well, it's it's also one. So that is one. So if I take i hat and I and I dot it with itself, it's going to be one. Also true of you know j hat and k hat um, because they are all unit vectors as well. Okay, so um, I'm going to jump in and do a ridiculous example. Am I going to do that? Yeah, I am going to do that. It's good for you to see this. So I'm going to have to save this because I've run out of space here. Uh, I'll save as, um, we're going to call it a JPEG so we can look at it later. And it's going to be MCV. You know, there's an MCV. Uh, and this is, what is it? It is to begin with dot product of geometric vectors. Okay, lovely, all good. And then make a new one, file new. Okay, so let's look at an example. So uh, this is, you know, an example. So imagine we had the following. I'm going to say, given that vector A plus vector 3B and the vector 4A minus B are perpendicular. to each other. And that the magnitude of A is equal to double the magnitude of B. What I want to do is I want to determine the angle between vectors A and B. And it's like, that uh, that's, doesn't seem like a lot of information on one level, and it seems like an enormous amount of information on the other level. So let's think about things we know. So it says that this and this, they are perpendicular to each other. Well, what do we know about perpendiculars when we're talking about vectors? Well, we know that perpendicular vectors have a dot product of zero. So I can set that up. So we know, following, we know that A plus 3B dotted with 4A minus B is going to yield zero. We know that, right? It's a given. So we have distributive property going on here. So we are going to have A dotted with 4A uh, minus A dotted with B plus 12, and I'm going to write it because we talked about it being commutative, it doesn't matter the order we put it in, for 12A dotted with B um, minus 3B dotted with itself is equal to zero. Okay, so um, what we can have here is, um, I'll simplify a little teeny bit. So this is four uh, times A dotted with itself. Um, and then, you know, we have 12 A dotted with B, and here we have minus one A dotted with B. So we're gonna get plus 11 A dotted with B, uh, and then minus three B dotted with itself is equal to zero. Now. One of the properties that we saw earlier was that when you dot a vector with itself, it's equal to its magnitude squared, right? So we can simplify this. We can say, oh, this is 4a uh, squared, right? 
plus 11a dotted with b minus 3. Well, it's a vector dotted with itself, so it's its magnitude squared is equal to 0. Now, um, what we do know as well is from this definition up here is that the magnitude of a is equal to 2 times the magnitude of b. Okay, so I can use that to my advantage. So we can say that 4, okay, my clock is going crazy here. Um, all right, so 4 and then a, we said the magnitude of a was actually the same thing as um, 2 times the magnitude of b squared plus 11. Now, a dotted with b, we're going to go with the definition. A dotted with B is equal to the magnitude of A uh, times the magnitude of B times the cosine of the angle in between them. And then minus 3 magnitude of B squared is equal to 0. All right, keep going. 2 squared is 4. 4 times 4 is 16. So this is 16 times the magnitude of B squared. Um, and then I'm going to kind of gather these terms up. So minus 3, the magnitude of b squared, um, plus 11. Well, we magnitude of a, we know the magnitude of a is actually 2 times the magnitude of b. So that's a right there. Uh, and then times the magnitude of b again, uh, times the cosine of theta uh, equals 0. We're getting there. Um, so, um, doop, 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 doop. so if we then gather up our like terms, so we're going to have that this is 13 magnitude of b squared plus um, this is going to be 22 magnitude of b squared cos theta equals zero. Hmm, we're getting there. I'm going to lob that term to the other side. So we're going to have 22 times the magnitude of b squared cos theta is equal to negative 13 magnitude of b squared. Hopefully you can see where this is going. I'm going to divide both sides by 22 times the magnitude of b squared divide by 22 times the magnitude of b squared. So then we have the cosine of theta is equal to, well, those are going to divide out to be 1, negative 13 over 22. And then we're going to simply drop that into our calculator. We're going to find out that theta is equal to the cos inverse of 13 over 22, negative. Okay? And I don't have my calculator handy, but that's where it is. Okay? So, um, Fairly heavy duty stuff, I will admit. Uh, and I'm gonna assign some homework questions to practice this. Um, so this is gonna be page 377, numbers one, and then three to five, and then six C, seven C, uh, nine, 11, and 13, which is a lot of work. And you know, it's up to you to decide how much of that you want to engage in but it is good practice. Okay. Thanks guys.